Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to I Took a DNA Test, and the results are shocking by the Anime Man. Now, I do not know much about this channel at all. I'm not really that into anime. I did take a quick Google search, and he's half Australian, half Japanese. So Australian, that means that he's probably gonna have a European background, and it could be a mixture, or it could be a singular one, I don't know. So hopefully he'll give a little bit of background on his own family history. This is a little bit of a longer one. Usually I try to not do too long of ones, but this one was really requested and uh, has a lot of watches on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Not gonna say anything else, so let's just jump on in. Oh, how's it going, everyone? It's the Anime Man. As you can see, I am back in Australia for this video. I have returned to my roots, which couldn't be more of a fitting location, especially for today's video topic. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel or me, for that matter, first of all, subscribe. But second of all, a question that I get asked very often, especially when people look at my face for the first time is what's your nationality i don't know if it's because of my skin tone or the fact that i am a mixture of all sorts of different things but a lot of people have a really difficult time pinpointing exactly what my nationality is based on looks alone and honestly if i had no idea that he was half australian half japanese i would have guessed that he was some sort of south asian uh, you know, like India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and something like that. Um, so, yeah, I wonder what he does, how in-depth he knows about his ancestry. Trust me, I've had every option thrown at me under the sun. I've had Indian, I've had Middle Eastern, I've had Mexican. Mind you, all three of those, uh, I, none of that is me, by the way. But to give you some spoilers, I am half Japanese, a quarter Hungarian, quarter German, born Australian. But I just say I'm Australian Japanese to, to, to make things easier. So Hungarian and German, we're looking at, you know, somewhat central, somewhat Eastern European. So very likely, you know, he will get some of that Eastern European. We'll have to see which test he goes with, but I'm sure we'll see a good amount of Eastern European, probably Balkans uh, readings, Baltic readings very possibly. And uh, depending on how the sites decipher it, probably Russian readings or something like that as well. And then it wouldn't surprise me either if he ends up getting any sort of slightly Mediterranean related stuff or even Northwest European, but I guess we'll just have to see. I'm going to be taking two different DNA tests okay. right here. We have 23andMe, which is gonna be a good way to see what exactly my nationality is. And then we also have Ancestry DNA. This one is more so figuring out who exactly is part of my extended family which actually both of them do the same i don't know why he's thinking one is more of something than the other i'm guessing he probably read a couple of forums and saw that people thought that 23 and me is more accurate um because i do see a lot of people that really like 23 and me really like 23 and me's ad mixtures but honestly for me you know i've seen so many of these across so many sites that you know they all vary so much and that yeah i don't know both of them, you get relatives, and both of them, you get admixture. The only difference of what you get, really, between the two... Well, I guess there's a lot of differences. I have a whole video about the slight differences and stuff. 23andMe has some of the better comparison stuff for your shared matches, but Ancestry DNA has some of the better tools for your matches, too. But Ancestry is a bigger database, which is probably why he's saying it's better for your matches to find your extended family but 23andme also has a massive database yeah I, I go into a whole bunch of this stuff on that uh best dna test on my main channel so i'll probably link that in the card above but being that he's half japanese it would be really cool to see a future video where he does one of the asian based dna tests where they get much more granular with asian ancestries so you're not getting these very vague readings but much more granular specific areas, so. By the way, I have no idea about. So you might be wondering, Joey, why are you doing these in Australia? Why couldn't you have done it once you got back to Japan? Well, I would have if they shipped these to Japan. Yeah, weirdly enough, both 23andMe and Ancestry.com, they don't ship these testing kits to Japan. I don't know why, maybe it's because Japan has their own DNA testing thing that they like to take care of, but regardless, I had to ship these to my parents' place right here. So yeah, I've never done this before really curious so 
let's just uh, let's let's just try it out. I guess we'll start off with uh, 23 and me. Immediately you open the box and he just says, "Hi." Well, this looks extremely ominous. I assume this is the saliva collection kit. Okay. So yeah, he bought both of the kits where it's saliva collection and not the swabs because Family Tree DNA. My heritage, they're both swabs, whereas Ancestry and 23andMe, they're the spit tube. So to start off with, I have to download the 23andMe app and use it to register my kit. Nice. And there you go. There's my 23andMe DNA. So now all I have to do is put it back in this box here, ship it off, and then what is it, like three to four weeks, I think, I'll receive an email with all of my uh, DNA information. Now this is ready to go. Sometimes these like DNA testing kits can get a little bit faulty, so just as a backup, I'm also going to do Ancestry.com to see if we actually get the exact same results or not, or at least close enough to the results that we get on one of them. Alas, it is finally time, ladies and gentlemen. My DNA results for both 23andMe and Ancestry.com are finally in, so we can finally see and find the answer to who the hell I am. So let's start off with 23andMe and uh, we have our ancestry composition right here. It seems from right here you can see that I am 51% East Asian, specifically 51% Japanese, which means, ladies and gentlemen, my DNA has told me that I am officially more Japanese than I am white. The rest of me, it seems, is 41% European, which is also great because my father is in fact European. I'm 20% Eastern European, 16% North Western European. Specifically, 16% of me is French and German, which actually makes sense because my grandfather is German. 0.01% of me is broadly Northwestern European. What the fuck does that mean? Northwestern Europeans are represented by people from... Means that they can't figure it out more specific than that, so they're just giving you their best guess. So 0.1%, they were like, well, we can't tell beyond Northwestern European, but it's definitely Northwestern European. And honestly, they should probably do that with a lot more of their readings, but. From as far west as Ireland, as far north as Norway, as far east as Finland, and as far south as France. So uh, as you can see right here, oh, I might even be a little bit Icelandic even. That would be pretty sick. Apparently, 1% of me is fucking Italian. Mamma mia. That's pretty cool, actually. And 2.9% uh, of me is broadly European. So I guess I'm, I'm just kind of like stuck in Europe. He, he does have a pretty decent mix of European compared to a lot of them that I've seen. I mean, not too crazy, especially from what he told us, knowing his ancestry was German and Hungarian, I think it was that he said. So the Eastern European makes a lot of sense. The Northwestern European, especially being mostly French and German, definitely makes a lot of sense. He is getting a little bit of that Southern uh, European, some of that Italian, which... You know, it might be actual Italian or it may just be I, maybe not necessarily a misread. It could be a misread. But, you know, if it if he did have 1.1% Italian in the sense that he does have an Italian ancestor that this 1.1% represents, then we're looking at decently far back. I do this all the time, but grandparent, you're usually getting 25%. Great grandparent, 12.5%. Second great grandparent, 6.25%. Third great grandparent, three point uh, whatever it is, and then so on. So once you get down to the one percents and the two percents, you're looking at third, fourth great grandparents or further. And then you start getting into the generations of your ancestry where you might have ancestors that you didn't actually inherit DNA from. You know, a lot of people have fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, great, whatever grandparents where they are their ancestors, but they didn't inherit any DNA because of recombination over time. It got filtered out sort of thing, which does happen. So this 1.1% could represent some sort of Italian ancestor, or it could be a misread or a misunderstanding based on his other DNA where maybe it's like his German ancestry because, you know, depending on where he is in Germany, maybe it's, you know, Southwestern Germany where it's not too far from areas of Italy and you you know there may be correlating dna segments between those populations and they think some of his german ancestry is actually italian obviously with the broadly european the broadly northwestern european they're not quite so sure about some of his dna and that's something honestly i think a lot more people should get because sometimes the readings on these sites get a little too specific and change a whole lot once they do the updates and this seems like a pretty straightforward uh from what he was saying and then i 
saw that it was West Asian, North African, I think it was down below. So let's see what that is. I guess. But see, this is information that I already knew, right? Like my mother is fully Japanese and my father is Hungarian German, right? Which makes sense that I would get these results like this. But what's also interesting is that 6.8%, roughly 7% of me is Western Asian and North African, which actually also makes a tiny bit of sense because I believe my grandmother's side or my grandfather's side is Serbian or is from Serbia. More specifically here, it says that I am 6.8% Anatolian. I don't even know what the fuck Anatolia is, uh, but I guess it combines parts of like Cyprus, Turkey, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan around here. So uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. From yeah, it does kind of make sense. You know, it is it, it could be DNA leaking into the Balkan areas, but more specifically, it could be representative of a specific ancestor of his that ended up going into uh, the Balkans, Hungary, wherever, or Germany, and that's how it kind of got into his family. So at 6.8%, then we're looking at a second great-grandparent which is actually genealogically relevant. So if someone were able to build his family tree and do the research and get back to all of the second great grandparents, you would probably expect to find one who came from maybe Turkey or, or Greece or Cyprus. And that's also something he could check by looking at his DNA matches to see, is he finding a lot of DNA matches where they're constantly having ancestry in areas of Anatolia. So maybe he finds that he has a whole bunch of matches where they all have ancestry in Istanbul. And because of that, then he might be able to figure out that he actually also has ancestry there as well. So let's continue to see what else he has to say. My looks, I get a lot of people actually mistaking me for being Middle Eastern looking. So, hey, there you go. That's probably where the feeling comes from. <laughs> we also have about 0.2% of me that is trace ancestry. We detected traces of the following populations in your DNA. I'm Central Asian. Ooh, okay. So a tiny bit of me is also Central Asian, which is interesting because I thought for sure that, you know, uh, when, when I saw the Central Asian part, I thought maybe it has to do with the whole like Genghis Khan thing but i guess uh mongolia isn't included on this list so uh there you go it seems that uh one almost one percent of me is unassigned there is a wide range of human diversity in the world and sometimes that algorithm is unable to match a region of your dna to a specific population with confidence which totally makes sense in my opinion am i surprised with these results uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, again, it's kind of cool to know that more than half of me is Japanese. So, hey. It's not really more than half of you. It's just that based on the algorithm, the margin of error and all of that, it's coming out to 51% but you're you're still get you know you're only you're getting half from one parent and half from the other parent so it's not like he's like just a tad bit more japanese i mean technically he's more japanese than he is anything else because his european is a huge mixture of nationalities but at the same time this is only based on 23 and me's readings where a lot of their asian readings are quite vague so he could actually do a test with one of the asian companies and then get a much much more nuanced asian breakdown where he might be getting parts in korea or maybe they even break down of specific areas within japan that he has a lot of his family coming from so it's kind of you know it's kind of vague here and i guess it, it seems not so vague because it's saying japan as like a specific country and it doesn't seem super vague but I think technically it's it's vaguer than it probably should be and his Japanese, his Asian ancestry might actually be a bit more of a mixture of Asian ancestries than it seems to be. That Japanese bloodline is kicking in strong. So it says here, your ancestry timeline. How many generations ago was your most recent ancestor for each population? Oh, it makes sense that we start from the 60s, which is, you know, when my parents were born. You most likely had a parent or grandparent who was 100% Japanese. This person was likely born between 1930 and 1960. Yes, my mother's side. You most likely had a parent or grandparent or great-grandparent who was 100% French and German. Uh, this person was likely born between 1900 and 1960. For people who don't know my backstory, my name is Joseph but I am actually Joseph the sixth 
in my uh, family, in the Bissinger side of the family, which means I have six full generations of Josephs that exist in my family. And I guess that goes all the way back to here, Anatolian. So I well, now I don't know why he's correlating his name with that, because, I mean, he's talking... If he's the sixth Joseph, I assume that's his paternal side. So he's talking specifically about his paternal line and jumping to this and then going Anatolian. It's not telling you that that's Anatolian in any sort of way. So hopefully he's not misreading it like that. I guess my first uh, uh, Joseph in in the family was Anatolian. No, you're, you're making assumptions based on weird... Uh, it, no, you're, you're jumping to a conclusion that has no logical basis to it. This is just telling you that your most recent ancestor that would have been 100% Anatolian or would have at least considered themselves 100%, maybe not Anatolian, who knows how they define themselves, but 100% of whatever it is where Anatolia is defined, they were born likely sometime in between that time. So like I was saying, it's probably going to be a second great grandparent because it was six point whatever percent. So each number is a generation. So we have one, 1960, generation one, generation two. So that's his grandparents. Generation three, great grandparents. Generation four, second great grandparents. And then see, that's where Anatolian is falling right on. But they have it going into the third, your great grandparents, and into the fifth, this the uh, third great grandparents, because. With DNA, it's not always perfect in recombination, and sometimes you might get far less than you're expecting from a certain ancestor. Sometimes you get way more than you were expecting, but for the most part, it's probably going to be from a second great grandparent. So that's all that this is really saying is if you're going to be looking for an ancestor where they considered themselves 100% Anatolian, then it's probably going to be someone born likely between 1900 and 1840 and most likely within this fourth generation eastern european you can read it as it's most likely the most recent fully eastern european probably indicating the hungarian ancestry that's going to be a great grandparent and then with this italian you can see it stretches over a long amount because it's only one percent and so you're looking at a possibly third great grandparent possibly a fourth a fifth or a sixth or a seventh and so on so kind of like exactly like what i was saying before so that's what this is saying in no way is this saying that you go back to the 1840s and all of your ancestors are anatolian so that must mean that that joseph the first was anatolian no does not mean that in any way at all so hopefully he's not reading that and thinking that that's exactly what it is although that's basically what he's saying at this point and then they became Eastern Europeans, which no. again makes sense. And then no, they, became... they didn't. They didn't be. They weren't Italian, and then became Anatolian, and then became Eastern. Europe. It's bad mystery. This is a bad misread of this. I'm sorry, dude, but sorry, Joseph. Not not right. Not French right. and German, and then the Japanese popped in and was like, "Yo, I'm gonna spoil this bloodline real quick." <laughs> but apparently, nope. before the JoJo family was begun, your boy was Italian. That completely makes sense. No, it doesn't because you're not making any logical sense because you're jumping to conclusions based on if, an ignorance of how these DNA tests are, what this is actually saying. So it even says it. How many generations ago was your most recent ancestor for each population? Not what was the timeline of, oh, we went from Italian and then became Anatolian. Do you think they moved from it, like your entire European family moved from Italy to Anatolia and then moved to, like, okay. <laughs> considering Sorry. i shouldn't be getting i shouldn't be getting mad at him you know this isn't his specialty his thing is anime but it's just it's one of the things about uh these dna tests and one of the main reasons why i started doing reactions is because i would watch videos of people doing their dna results and they would just say ridiculous stuff that made no sense because they didn't know any better so hopefully he hasn't been walking around telling people oh yeah my family went from being italian to an Italian to to whatever that one is uh, eastern european to french and german and the... yeah bring <laughs> pizza and pasta are my favorite fucking foods on the planet so uh my... always with the food i've said this in so many videos people always relate i like this food so it must be from this ancestry 
Trust me, I like all sorts of Asian foods. I'm definitely not Asian. So. Oh, mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. All right, let's see. Traits, explore the genetics behind your appearance and senses. I have 21 physical features, five taste and smell features, that's weird, and 11 weird and wonderful. 77% chance you have detached earlobes. Yes, which I do. Now they are both fully pierced. Okay, here's where things start to get really scary. Early hair loss. See, because my grandparents, especially on my mum's side, uh, my granddad went bald at the age of 26. For the longest time, it was a kind of a scare tactic in my family to be like, hey, you know, you kind of take after your grandfather a little bit. That motherfucker went bald at the age of like 25, 26. So uh, you better watch out, Joey. LOL. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, that shit scarred me for life. When I was like in my teens, I was like, I'm about to go bald. I can't fucking believe this shit. Not that there's anything wrong with people who go bald at a younger age. Shout out to those people, by the way. You, you, you know, you, you're a brave soul. But according to my 20 Hey, there's no bravery about it. You're just forced into it. I mean, I have an 81% chance that I will not experience hair loss or thinning before the age of 40. Thank God. You know what? I will fucking take that. Four out of five chance that I won't be thinning by the age of 40 and I'll still have some nice hair on my head. I'll take that shit, dog. All right, let's check out this uh, taste and smell. Asparagus odor detection likely can smell. What? Joseph, your genetics make you likely to be able to smell the asparagus odor in your urine. I mean, yeah, I definitely can. I, and I thought everyone could, but okay. I didn't know that was something a, a, a further evolved human being could only smell. I can likely taste a bitter taste. Y yes, I, I, I thought that was also normal. Cilantro taste aversion. Slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro, uh, which is true. I do not like cilantro or coriander for those of you who are not American. But I'm glad to know that uh, apparently disliking uh, cilantro slash coriander is uh, something that is just ingrained into my DNA. So uh, I'm sorry to all of you who are trying to force feed me cilantro. I reject it on a, on a genetic level. <laughs> and this one is interesting. People with your genetics in their 20s wake up on average around 8.53 a.m. on their days off, which I thought for sure was way earlier than what I'm usually used to. Apparently on the scale of morning person to night person, I am uh, in the middle. Maybe I should check next time. Like it, when I just like naturally wake up without an alarm clock, I'm gonna see what the time is. And if it's around like 8.53 AM, that's gonna be interesting. 23 and Me seems like it is pretty goddamn accurate. And I'm glad to know, uh, you know, where I come from. But I guess now I wanna get more into the nitty gritty details of not where I come from, but who I come from. You can do that with 23andMe. They have genetic matches too. They actually have a better shared match review page than Ancestry in my opinion. The thing that Ancestry really has over all the other companies is their database size. And honestly, if they weren't the largest database out of all the DNA tests, I don't think they'd be as dominant in the field as a lot of people think they are. Mostly based on the fact that they don't have a lot of the in-depth genealogy tools that genealogists really use, like, you know, chromosome browsers and things to help you do chromosome painting, advanced shared match reviews where you can actually see the differences between, you know, what you share with one of your matches and what that match matches with the other shared match and a whole bunch of other stuff. The stuff that, you know, allows us to do in-depth genetic genealogy. But let's keep watching what he has to say. So we're on Ancestry.com. We're going to figure out who my, I guess, ancestors are. So uh, here we go. Here genetic all, matches. All my DNA match. All right. So both of his parents have tested. And then the next closest is 155 Centimorgan with a seemingly Eastern European name and i should note because he comes from a mostly hungarian and german ancestry especially depending on how recent that is it might be a really good idea for him to get on my heritage because they have the best database for people still living in europe so ancestry has the largest database but if you were to test with my heritage you'll find way more people still living in europe than you would on ancestry a big part of it being that my heritage has a lot of distribution centers in europe that make it easier for them to send dna kits to people in europe and uh i'm glad to know that my father and my mother are 
I like how he blurs out his parents, but then doesn't blur out the names of his other matches. In fact, my real father and mother. It would have been some real awkward, like, you are not the father moment if uh, my someone other than my dad and my mom were to appear on here. So that's good. I have exactly a 50% shared DNA with my mom and dad. Yay. Good job, mom and dad. I, I definitely came from you. I also have an extended family here. Maria Kokai... Sapa? I have never heard of this person before, but uh, apparently they are my second to third cousin. We have a 2% shared DNA. They are Eastern European and Russian. I am apparently very loosely related to someone from Eastern Europe and Russia. And all Because you're Eastern European. Hungarian is within that Eastern European world. I... I... I don't know. I, I, you know, when it comes to these tests, especially, and the way that they define everything, there's a lot of connection between it all. So if you look at a map and you look at where Hungary is, and then you look where Russia is and what most people think of Eastern Europe, which I, I mean, I always think of Hungary as Eastern European, but I guess for whatever reason, maybe he's not. That's probably what it is, is it's a relative through your dad's side. And if you look at your dad, I bet if he looked at his dad's kit, because his dad is tested, he would see that that same match is probably twice as close to his dad. Sure, you know, almost twice as much DNA. Might share about as much. That match, 155 centimorgans. You're probably looking at maybe a second cousin, maybe a third cousin, but probably more than likely a second cousin, which means that they would share third great-grandparents. Is that right? No, they'd share great-grandparents. So that means that his grandfather and that person's grandparents were likely siblings. So that means that I bet his dad is matching that same person at possibly even more than twice as much DNA because the dad would then be a first cousin once removed. Granted, it could be a different relation, obviously, but that's, you know, seemingly the most likely based on just a generic second to third cousin range. All these fourth and sixth cousins coming out here, I don't know any of these people at all. Apparently, uh, there is one person in Canada, Madison Olgard, who is a distant family member. Yeah, let's show everybody's names and then show their locations too. That's not an issue. Mind. That's nice. Wow, I have a bunch of like distant relatives. I will say, I for someone who all the time, I'm constantly like, oh, please show the DNA matches. Please show the DNA matches. Finally, someone's showing them and I'm being so snarky about all it. All across the United States. One dude living in California here. Oh, it's Roxanne Sexwar. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. I got Mr. Kurt Genmail, who is a family member from Michigan. Holy shit, look. Look at that mustache, dude. Whew. Kurt, I'm, I'm gonna be able to grow one of those one of these days because I am loosely related to you. We have a bunch of family members living in Chicago, one in Wisconsin, one in New York here. Annie Drapek, hey man, looking clean. And I have a few family members living in New Jersey. And then I think I also saw a bunch of people from Australia, right? We got George Topol Sanyi, uh, who is a distant relative of mine. And then both my uh, parents right there living in Australia, in Sydney, which is where I'm from. Uh, it seems like Ancestry.com is kind of on the same boat as 23andMe as well, with exactly half of me being from Japan, which is good to know. 27% of me is Germanic European, which makes sense. That is probably my grandfather. And then the Eastern European and Russian side, especially Slovakia and Hungary, is my grandmother's side. And 4% of me is Swedish and Danish, which is pretty goddamn cool. So exactly a quarter of my family. But notice there's none of that Italian in there. Is from the Slovakia Hungary era area, which again totally makes sense. So it seems like during World War One, a bunch of my family got the fuck out of Hungary and uh, Czechoslovakia at the time, and was just like, "Peace out, we're going to the U.S." And I guess my grandparents were the few that were like, uh, "We're not going to the U.S. Guns are scary. Let's go to Australia instead." On my mom's side, everyone has just kind of been chilling in Japan for the most part. So that's pretty dope. So yeah, good to know that I have waited for like three or four months or however long this video has to been taken to make to find out pretty much what I already knew. But it is kind of comforting, I guess, to realize or be confirmed of the suspicions of who I am exactly. But it's also very, very cool just to see some like other little tidbits, I guess, about me that uh, were just, you know, proven by my DNA. So yeah, very cool. Um, I am exactly half Japanese, quarter Hungarian, 
quarter German with, I guess, a little bit of Middle Eastern and Nordic thrown in as well. And uh, hey, if you've done a 23andMe or an Ancestry.com, what are some like interesting little bits of information about you? In saying this, I am not sponsored by 23andMe or Ancestry.com in the slightest. I just wanted to know who the fuck I am and where the fuck I came from. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Like if everybody if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Johnny. Okay, well, that was a decent video. Not the best, not the worst. Technically, I should be rating this a little bit higher because it's one of the few that actually shows DNA matches and shows it a bit more extensively than most people that do. Based on everything that he had said about his ancestry, the DNA seems to match up perfectly. But of course, I think it'd be very interesting for him to take an Asian-based DNA test to see if it gets more granular with his Japanese ancestry. And as well, if he were to take my heritage. I think he might get a lot better matches, but most especially if you're from a recent migration out of Eastern Europe or even generally Europe. But a lot of times I see, especially from my friends who do genealogy in Ukraine and in Romania and elsewhere in Eastern Europe and the Balkans, they all seem to basically say that my heritage is the easiest one to get. And I think there's been a few YouTube DNA result test videos that I've watched where that's been the sentiment of people in different areas of Europe and elsewhere around the world where my heritage was the easiest one to get. Like in South America, my understanding is that my heritage is one of the best because it's the easiest to get and thus it has the better database for people in South America. It was a little disappointing at that one part where he was really misreading the, you know, here's where we think your most recent ancestors of certain population groups were living. And he kind of read that as, oh, this is a timeline map of how my family went from here to here to here, which it wasn't. And then I was also kind of surprised that he didn't realize that there were also relatives that he could see through 23andMe. Or maybe he saw that and for whatever reason just didn't really like care about it or didn't really focus on it because the focus was Ancestry's the test that has the stuff that, you know, gives you the genetic matches. But from a genealogical standpoint, in terms of which test to take kind of is the best option to take Ancestry and 23andMe because the other websites are ones that you can then upload to and Ancestry and 23andMe are the ones where you can't upload to. So if you're trying to get the most out of these DNA tests to do your genealogy and actually trace your family ancestry, find the stories and confirm this person was your ancestor or that person or whatever, then the best route to take would be to test on Ancestry, test on 23andMe, and then upload those to all of the other available databases. So GEDmatch, Family Tree DNA, MyHeritage, Genie, Living DNA, GenieNet, a uh, whole bunch of other websites I'm sure that are out there. In terms of that, that's a you know a great start a great combo of dna tests to actually purchase and take just because you really can't upload to them but there are also a lot of other third-party websites where you can upload your dna and even pay for certain services and not too long ago matt baker from useful charts did a video all about that which i then did a reaction to and you can watch that right here thank you so much for watching this video i'm jert ross a genie vlogger see you in my next one Thank you to my patrons and YouTube members.